Okay, here's my first experiment with the uh, Electro 3D printed project with the voice recognition chip put in there. Um, this is still running on just two AA batteries, so three volts, which means I had to use a, uh, a boost regulator to get it up to five volts for the voice recognition and for the white LEDs, but I'm still running the motor just on the three volts. And I'll show you the schematic back here of what's in there. If I was starting a new project with the idea of just doing voice recognition, I would uh, go with three cells, whether they're you know triple A's or double A's or whatever, because that'll give you four and a half volts, which is right in the perfect range for the speech recognition. It's also a very good voltage for running any type of LED with a current limiting resistor, and it's also a good voltage for running the TT gear motors to get a little bit more speed and power out of them. But this robot was already designed and I tried to retrofit it in there. Um, also, you can see this one is a silver, it's not a gold, like the uh, first one that just turns on and walks. And that's because I had all these parts left from when I was designing that first one. Some of the parts were uh, in gray PLA, some of them were in the lighter gold, some of them were in the, the darker gold. You know, they were just a little bit of everything. So I decided I'd just hose the whole thing down as silver, since Electro actually spent the majority of his life, other than the year 1939, being silver. Got repainted, repurposed, gutted, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And, um, okay, so I think, because there's so many light reflections, let's maybe have them walk this way. Got the on-off switch here. When you first turn it on, the system boots up so it runs for a second. Then it should stop, unless you happen to have turned it off while it was still in the go mode. Then it will remember that and it'll power up uh, going. Electro, walk forward. And there it goes. Electro, stop walking. Didn't get it because of the motor noise. Electro, stop walking. So the one problem that I was kind of thinking about and worried about is the microphone placement. Um, right now, I, this particular head, this is the AI, the AI head, because um, I already had one with the mouth hollowed out. So the microphone, I just glued it on the inside of the mouth, facing, facing outward there, and seemed like a good place but you do have all that mechanical noise that you heard from the motor and if it's loud enough when you speak you're gonna have to speak louder than that motor noise in order for the chip to uh, pick it up so it might be better to either uh, use a quieter motor in your project like any of the uh, little N20 motors they're basically silent or it might be better to uh, since the microphone's up in the head, maybe put in a, a wall there to seal it off. Of course, there'll still be vibrations through the plastic and everything. So maybe you want to float the microphone in foam or something. I'm just telling you the things that I figured would be a problem before I even started. And, and some of them are true, some of them aren't. What I'll probably do is um, see if I can rework the files to uh, raise the battery box up. A few millimeters and take it down a few and lower the switch a bit more modify the frame that the motors on to allow that to happen and just see if I can work three uh, AAA batteries in there that'll get rid of one circuit that'll get rid of the voltage boost circuit which as you can see right now is running the the eyes and there's also one up in there that's illuminating the gears the sunlight's beaming in through the window so you can't really see any of that stuff but uh, Electro, walk forward. You see it picks it up very clearly when there's not a bunch of motor noise going on. There isn't any issue then. Electro, stop walking. Yeah, just speak clear and plain. Those just happen to be the words that I programmed into it. And of course the whole idea of having the thing voice controlled is to uh, imitate what they did back in 1939 was they had Electro on a voice control system. It didn't really <clears throat> it didn't really decode words. 
what it did is it decoded the number of words, or maybe even better put, the pauses between words. Uh, they were using telephone technology back then, and in dial telephones, when you run, when you turn to the number and release, those are sending clicks back, and each one of the clicks advances a rotary solenoid. So they were using rotary solenoids, and the guy spoke in the microphone, and every time he said a word, that simply turned a relay on, a Vox circuit, and you can actually see a light in the chest of the, the actual one when it's being demonstrated back in 39, with every word just lighting up. Then when he stops talking, it goes out. So every word would advance that step relay. Everything would have a different phrase, like maybe just stop. That, that would be just one advance. But then if he says three words like I did, that's going to be a different function because it's going to advance the relays to a different point. But this is actual uh, voice recognition or sound recognition because I believe since it works with any language, they're saying, and um, it probably would work with sounds. You could probably play musical notes like, uh, uh, what was that movie? <laughs> with the tones and the spaceships and the people and all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Steel, Spielberg movie. You could probably play those tones and uh, have that turn something on and do something. Or maybe you could learn to whistle a particular thing. Only problem with that is it might become frequency dependent at that point. Right now it doesn't seem to be frequency dependent. Whatever this chip is doing, it's uh, analyzing the words themselves and the syllables in the words. Okay, well, let's take a look at the schematic in case any of you guys want to play with something like this. And it's going to be kind of hard for me to hold this still and point at the paper and look at the viewfinder. But basically, as you can see, what I've got drawn here is I have my two AA batteries. I've got my negative rail and my positive rail. That's the on off switch in the back that just opens up the line. I take that 3 volts, run it down into the little boost, uh, 5 volt regulator, boost regulator. One side's got to go to ground, one side goes to the 3 volts, and it outputs 5 volts. Off that 5 volt rail, I'm going through a 10K resistor, believe it or not, uh, and two white LEDs down to the negative rail, and those are for the eyes. I didn't want them piercingly bright. I wanted them to look very yellow, and in real life they, they are very nice and yellow and just visible. And then the ones that I mounted up in the chest to shine down onto the gears in the hole, I went ahead and put in a, a 470 ohm resistor, so I'm running that one hotter to send more light down to the gears so that they're visible. And that 5 volt rail goes to the voice decoder chip. It's got these are in the correct order if you had the chip sitting here. It goes 5 volts in. The next pin is going to be your negative. So I have that coming down here to the negative rail. And then your next pin is the actual output that we're using. In this casing I'm using a MOSFET. It's an uh, IRLZ44. I guess two R's. And uh, you can see this is the actual way you're going to connect the gate. And your source and your drain are all shown. So the one side of it it's going to come down to ground. Think of it just like an NPN emitter switch type thing. Only we're using a MOSFET because I wanted to get very low resistance so I can get as much voltage to the motor as possible. So the other lead goes to one of the motor leads and the remaining uh, the motor lead, we'll call it the MOSFET going to the negative motor lead just to keep things from being too confusing. And then the positive side just goes right up to the 3 volt rail. So this device is switching the MOSFET and the MOSFET's just applying ground. We already have the three volts so then the motor will turn on and turn off. Uh, across the motor, in this case I have a 0.47 uh, UF capacitor. Uh, typically for reducing the noise on these cheap toy motors you can use anything from a 0 0.01 you know up to a 0.47. We usually will catch the high frequency noise that can throw back on the line make things work a little bit more reliably. But like I said uh, while I was showing you the robot, if you were to put three batteries in here, you could eliminate this whole bit here, and you would just have the one supply rail, which would be 4.5 volts, and you could use it to run your LEDs, you could use it to run your uh, voice decoder, and you could use it to power your motor. It would greatly simplify whatever project that you were going to work on, just to go with three in the first place. So... Um, I'll put links down below to the uh, normal builds for this 
and that'll provide links for the STL files and I believe it even provides a link for watching the actual electrical robot working back in 1939 so you can check that out and you can uh, if you watch carefully as the guy standing over here to the robot speaks in the microphone you can see the little light inside lighting up with the words that the guy is saying into the microphone each one of those is advancing the relays to another step to perform another function